Hi everyone, this is Ian Boyd. Um, I'm a guest, your guest streamer today. I work with Learning Spaces and Services at the Hill Library, and I work with the Learning Spaces and Services Department. Um, I work with the Makerspace here in Hill Library, I work with the VR Studio in Hill Library, and I work with the new Innovation Studio that is uh, launched this past spring in Hill Library. Um, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be trying out um, a new browser-based modeler called Clara. Um, I think you can see in the top, it might be cut off a little bit, but this is Clara.io. It's a free uh, browser modeling application that's put out by a Canadian company um, that's kind of trying to make it available. It has some uh, features that are locked behind a paywall, but they're mainly involved in like cloud-based computing and rendering, um, like render servers. Uh, so most of what you can do with it is like all open and accessible. So it's a really interesting tool that we haven't really tried out in the Makerspace or VR Lab, but I'm really interested in kind of seeing what it can do. So today I thought my stream would be me kind of poking it a little bit. Um, I've done some research with it in the past, like, you know, to get to know the basics of everything. Uh, but I really want to kind of see what features we have and I would kind of talk about what features uh, we're looking for in like kind of any modeler that I look with. Uh, specifically in this case, uh, a browser-based surface modeler. Um, like there's a lot of other great modelers out there, you know, like Blender and Maya are ones that I probably use more often, but um, it's good to think about these as kind of a teaching tool and from a point of accessibility. Um, and Clara's got a fairly robust tool set for a free modeler, it seems like, but I just want to take a look and see. Have I made anything with this before? Yeah, a few things. Um, I don't know if I have anything that's like saved on it, but, um, but yeah, I've, I've played around with it to make like some, some objects, um, some architectural stuff. It's pretty interesting, like, and I'll kind of just get started and go underway and kind of talk as I work. So what I'm going to start up here is you've got your line of primitives up here if you're starting with. So like most things, I usually start with a plane or a cube. And you've got a bunch of different windows, you know, like your basic four window setup. If I wanted to, I can switch this um, from perspective, you know, to a right view and kind of get the full orthographic setup, but I think right now I'm just going to stay in perspective and kind of look at what we're getting started with. So it's kind of got a pretty intuitive um, feature set for a modeler. I know like if you're getting started with one for the first time, sometimes figuring out how to do the basic stuff is pretty difficult, but most of the what stuff you need is like right here on the status bar. So you've got four kind of windows that you can mess with for kind of what Clara does. Uh, we're going to be sticking in mainly modeling today, but you can jump over to like the rendering and layout because it does have a fully featured um, like physics PBR, phys physics based rendering pipeline that you can incorporate if you want to, you know, start working on your materials and stuff. You can do other things like layout UVs with it and things like that too. So it has a lot of features outside of just like the basic modeler. Um, I'm not really trying to sell anyone on it. You can use whatever modeling package you want, but I'm kind of uh, interested in it. And I'm always looking for good, like free accessible browser alternatives. Um, and part of the reason that we do that, let's do our selector box. Part of the reason that we do that is because in the libraries, if we're using it a teaching tool, like that for people who have never done it before, like the barrier to entry, like on a browser based modeler is so low, right? Like. Um, compared to like, you know, even Blender, which is like free, you still have to download the application. Um, if you're just jumping into an online workshop for the first time and you have like no idea if you ever want to jump into this modeling world, like sometimes even that is a little intimidating and like the interface for Blender um, or Maya or, uh, you know, like any of these surface based modelers is usually very intimidating because they're such, you know, robust packages. And that's like really good for them because you can do so much with them, right? Like you, you can do visual effects, you can do particles, you can do animation, you can rig, um, like you can do dynamic setups, like all on top of like their modeling toolkits. But it's very intimidating, like if you're getting into one for the first time. So what's good about like the browser ones is they're usually a little more accessible because like their interf interface is um, a little less, if that makes sense. So let's see, give me this. We're gonna scale this down, I think. So a couple things like 
yeah, Blender.org. And Blender is a great tool. Like I use I use Blender a lot, um, and I really like it. But again, like the scale. But again, like it's yeah, the interface is just intimidating if you're coming to it from starting. I'm gonna turn on show edges here because this is my preferred way to model. I like seeing like the wireframe on top of the basic shader as I work. Okay, so to start with, you've got your basic surface ex extrudes. That's kind of what I'm just playing around with at the moment to kind of create this box shape. Um, if I want, can I do, I guess an insert would be like the surface extrude level. And then if I scale, yeah, okay. So then you can go from there. Um, it's on a world base. Can I change it to local? It looks like I can. Just experimenting and seeing what we're we're getting into. Well, let's change it back to world. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And then you can do your insets with that. And then if I wanted to do another extrusion, I could. Let me get, look at this from the side view. One second. Yeah, let's take this from the top. Oh, we got one selected that we do not want. So I'm just going to move this back into place. So what I'm doing right here is just kind of playing around with like some of the features that I see. What I'm really looking for, oh yeah, uh, world and local. Yeah, um, so basically what you're doing um, between world and local, uh, I would say like orientation, like, um, like you're operating in world or local space. So if you're in world space, um, I'm going to go ahead and visualize this. You are operating entirely within this grid system that you've got. So like your um, starting origin point is zero, zero, right here in the middle. And you are operating like from that origin is where everything scales from. So like if I turn it to world, like everything's gonna be based on that. Like the Z axis is always gonna be this way. The X axis is always gonna be this way. And the Y axis is always gonna be up and down. Um, and that's like never gonna change. However, if I switch it to local, what you're gonna find is that it's based on this component. You'll see the Z axis just flipped over here. If I go to my object, like uh, let me get out of face mode and go back to object. What I can do is if I turn this piece, like at 45 degrees, let's say, you'll notice that that Z axis is now still pointing forward on that space. So like, um, so like it's following the rotation of the shape because it's based on this particular mesh. If I turned it back to world, you're going to see that it snaps back to this grid. So like, if you're moving something in world space, you're moving it in relation to the grid. Everything's always going to be the same. Um, and it's always going to kind of like function that way. If I turn it back to local, everything is going to kind of move as a function of this object and whatever way I orient it, like that's going to be the new axis uh, that things are going to move on. So I'm just going to Z that back a little bit. But that's the difference in between. Uh, and sometimes you want to use both. Like there's definitely like times that you want to use one over the other. Um, if like I needed to do like an extrusion, you know, like out of this and I'd already turned it 45 degrees. Sorry, one sec. Yeah, let me get back to my rotation. If I'd already turned it like 45 degrees uh, and I wanted to do like an extrusion, like along that 45 degree angle, I would definitely want to work in local space um, because like otherwise it would take a lot of work to line it up uh, from the world space but a lot of times you want to like locate things in the world so oops go on you got it there we go okay so it, there's just different reasons to use them at different times so when i'm starting um work, working out with like uh, a new piece of software the first thing i want to look for like more than anything is like first you know can i select between all my components because if you're working with a surface modeler like that's that's step one and every polygon's broken down into a bunch of things. So you've got your faces, your edges, your vertices, and then this is a multi-sub object, which basically lets you select anything. It's like context-based. So I can grab an edge, I can grab a face, I can grab a vertice, and like that's always on. Uh, you'll notice because I'm in local, I'm getting some weird like directions from my vertices. Um, whereas if I switched into world, like they'd all be the same. So um, another good example of local versus world space. Um, so I want to be able to toggle between these and move all of these independently. And that's really the good hallmarks of a surface modeler. You know, um, I've been talking a lot about surface versus solid modelers. Uh, and I think it's good to like tell you what the difference is. So like a solid modeler 
is something like an auto like AutoCAD or any CAD program in general, where like all your um, shapes are mathematically determined, like mathematically defined. Um, and like they're just volumes in space. By comparison, a surface modeler is the only thing that your uh, shape exists as, or at a basic level, are these vertices, like that you see in your scene. Like that, like I'm just mousing between right here. So like, really all your shape exists as points in space. Um, and all it's doing is defining these points and then connecting them with a mesh. So like you are just manipulating points in space, which is a lot different from manipulating like entire volumes. So real fast, um, they're good for, some are better than others, like for certain applications. Like if you're gonna design for like real world, like things that need to be printed and stuff, usually a solid modeler is best um, because you don't get into some mesh errors. Like right now, um, I just deleted these faces around the edge. Yeah, a surface model is just yeah a bunch of connected points. I was just checking in scene um, that are just you know like a mesh is drawn between those points, and then that's how you decide. Uh, there's a bunch of other factors that make up like a surface mesh. You also have like normals. You see like I'm looking into the shape, and they're see through. That's because every um, plane that exists, plane or triangle, like a square or a quad or something, uh, all have a normal that says, all right, this direction is the interior of the object, and this direction is the exterior. So now all my normals are pointing the right way and they're facing out. Um, so like, there's like more things that make up a mesh just than points in space, I guess. I guess I'm simplifying, but um, but at the like basic level, that's just all it is. Is it just points that are mathematically marked in space? If you ever like export an STL file, like for 3D printing, that's like as simple like as a mesh gets. Um, because basically, if you look at the file, all you're gonna find is like this huge array of like points, like three coordinate points, like on the x, y, and z axis, and like that's all that's in the file, almost. Uh, so like it's just interesting to look at a model that way. Okay, so I'm going to extrude out this edge. So the next thing, like I was talking about, like at a base level, um, like your mesh is just points, and I want to be able to modify like all parts of that, like vertices, edges, and faces. The next thing I want to be able to do is like work with vertices to combine them, if that makes sense. And I know that you can do that inside of Clara, so I'm going to kind of mess with that here. So like I said, I accidentally selected this face earlier on, so I'm just going to draw out a new one. Um, there's actually an easier way to do this, but I kind of want to mess around with it. The easier way you could do this is you could, let me go to my face tab is you could select the two edges, like go to edge selection mode, one, two, and you could just bridge them like this. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. And then make that connection, except I don't want there to be one segment. I just want there to be zero. Yeah, this is something interesting about Clara, is that like um, anytime you do an operation, you have all these parameters you can mess with. So right now there was like, you can put in a bunch of segments if you want in. Uh, but they're not connected to this point. So I really just want to fill that gap. So I'm going to turn the segment to zero and then it's automatically going to fill it. Um, anytime that you're wondering like if something really got connected, you can always like smooth the mesh and then like that will show you because if you smooth it and there's holes in it, you know. So I'm just going to take a look right here. Yeah, mesh smooth. Yep, looks good. Looks like everything got merged up okay. So I just wanted to like mess with that and show. But if you wanted to merge points, like let me go ahead and delete this face out. I'm still gonna use these are hotkeyed, right? Like so you've got F8, F11, F10, F9. Weird. Okay, but you can also just go to M and select anything. So go through. It's just funny to me that like they run in that order because like F8 and then you jump over to F11 and then it goes backwards. Like I would just like reorder my uh, stuff like on the toolbar there, but I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal. Like I was just like looking and seeing. Okay, so if you wanted to connect it and use the mesh merge functions, whoops. Let's go back to my move tool. So I can move this down, something like this, and you'll see that there's still a gap right here, and we've got these two vertices in between. So I want to play with merging these. So you've got this weld option. So 
So I'm wondering if it works like a weld. If I turn my weld tool on, do I have to select both? Let's make sure I don't have anything else selected. I'm just going to go back here so I can look at all my views and make sure that only the things I want selected are selected. So I've got my weld property. So if I hit weld, yeah, so it's just going to snap them. And it looks like it averages them to the center. Is there a way I can just do them one at a time? Like what if I select one and the other? Weld. What about connect? I'm just like taking a look and see right now. So if I have my connect tool on. Sorry about this folks, I'm just playing around. Because being able to weld vertices is like a big deal. Like um, it's something that's good about what you need to do. I could also just move them much closer together. I wonder if there's like a good snapping, a snap move. Cause like that also can make a big difference. You can also merge them together very closely by like using your scale tool. <clears throat> and then you can offset the, um, not the transform, the pivot, which you have like the pivot to play with in here. So I've got the pale, uh, scale pivot offset, so I could like set this down, right? Like I could set it, whoops. Local, local pivot, scale pivot. Yeah, hold on. Oh, that's probably too much. Let's go to negative one or too little for this point. I'm just wondering. Uh, being able to modify your pivots, <clears throat> sorry, is a good yeah, why would they be out of order? Uh, I mean, it could have been done with lots of things in mind. It could be like um, a developmental thing. It could be like that they are planning on moving them at some point. Yeah, and then we can just move it down into place and we could merge it that way. So that's good. That's not bad, a bad way of doing it. I'm just kind of, and then you can weld it together and it's in place. And then if I need to adjust it, I can just move it down. And you kind of get like a, that's kind of cool. Like right here, you kind of um, it's it's drawing this like bounding box around the whole shape, and that's actually pretty good. Oops. Like if I went from perspective to like not left, maybe a maybe a top view. Let me see. I'm just switching around real fast. Yeah, like something in here. Like I could compare that and move it, and then like if you're um bounding box like shows up like this. Like if that bounding box gets extended, like the second it gets extended, you know it's in the wrong place. Can I nudge this with the keyboard? Uh, now it looks like it just nudges my view screen. Nudging's pretty good, like if you need to like position something really accurately. Um, I think a strength of surface modelers is you don't always need to be like exactly correct, but again, that's also a drawback. Um, you can make something that's more like artistic that way, you know, like you have more freedom because you don't have to, you know, care about like the width of things as much. Oops. Um, but also, again, like if you wanted to print it and you wanted it to be a functional object, like 3D print it or design it, um, it might be a drawback because you need those parts to like fit very mechanically together. So it's just like either one. Okay, so I've kind of got my thing right here. I'm going to do another extrusion. I just want to see. Yeah, and then we pull that out. Cool. Okay. So something else I want to kind of play with right now is that um, earlier you saw me do the mesh smooth function, like to smooth everything out. Um, if I do that now, you're going to see that it really like smooths down your mesh. So a common workflow in surface modelers is to put, um, what do we say, like kind of like holding loops on the edge of things. Um, and I want to see if I can like input polygon loops right now. So like what I want to do here, what like what a holding loop does, so like if you're, um, the easiest way would just to be to show you, but like if you're um, making a shape like this and you don't want this edge to be smoothed out so much, since it's going to average uh, like the, the distance between these two sides when it smooths, if you put another edge like right on top, it like holds the edge in place because you're averaging the distance and if one is like right next to it the average is going to be like a lot um, the average is going to be like a lot less than if like you've got a big distance in between so the smoothing effect is a lot less so I want to see so these are selection options I kind of want to insert 
like a new one or like an extrude an edge out. I'm just kind of seeing real fast if I can do that. What if I go back to like my full thing? Because this could be in a lot of stuff. So mesh, mesh slice, mesh cut would probably work. I just want to see. So that's going to cut along the whole length of the mesh. It looks like once you do this though, you get the option to transform it. So like, that's kind of neat. I'm just wondering if, so I can like move it up like this. Yeah, and I could place my edge this way. Let me get a top view real fast because I want to be a little neat on this. So here's my top view. Yeah, it kind of snaps when you've got it on a 90 degree difference. So I could do something like this and then I can go back to my perspective, kind of see where it's being held. Yeah. And then from there, if I want to enable it, fast, I'm just seeing. Yeah, we've got this slice cut option. And it also gives you the rotation, so I don't even have to eyeball it. I can just say negative 90, which is more convenient. Um, and then the center is fine. And I've got the cut option. Okay. And then when I just hit enter, or would I hit collapse poly mesh? I'm just seeing real fast. Yeah, and then you collapse the poly mesh, and then the slice is applied. Okay, that's cool. So from here, now, I don't know if this is the best one to show, but then if I do the mesh smooth, now that I have this like holding loop in there, you're gonna see that that front edge where I put the loop in now has like a bunch more loops. And although like the whole thing has been rounded, like that first front edge is um, a lot more held in place. Let me turn off show edges. So you see you've got like that darker shadow right there. That's because it's like holding that front edge. Um, okay, so that's cool. And let me go back and go from there. And I could even move that further up. So like if I wanted to select the edge right here, let me select my object, select edges. I can grab this ring and I can like slide it up. Something like this. Scale it in a little bit. So like the closer it is, the more it's going to hold the edge. So this is like really important if you ever do um, something called subdivision modeling. And when you say mesh smooth, it's even going to like show you that. It's going to let you select how many subdivisions you want to apply. So like I could go up to two and get like a much smoother mesh. And what you're going to see, let me take the edges off, is like the more you smooth it, the more you can see that that center, that like line now is really being held. And like it's a really uh, strong edge where everything else is pretty soft. Then I'm just going to back out though, because right now I'm just kind of looking at it and playing around, seeing what I could make. Does smooth round every edge? What if you just want to smooth a portion? So um, it just depends. Usually when you're doing subdivision modeling, you actually kind of want to sub the whole, smooth the whole thing. Um, and I guess the reason for that is that like you're kind of already deciding um, where to put where to put your edges. So like the process of like smoothing a portion is kind of like you building the mesh, if that makes sense. Like right now, I've decided that this needs to be a hard edge. So like by putting this edge in here, like I'm already um, I'm already like smoothing everything except this one edge, if that if that makes sense. Um, and the reason for that is because um, you want to keep your mesh as as simple as possible, like as you can for as long as you can. Because if you start working uh, in a surface modeler with like a really smooth mesh, let me go ahead and just smooth this a few times. Let me go up. We'll go like to three. Um, so what you're going to try to do now, like when you work on it, let me turn on my wire, my edges. So like now, instead of like where before, like I only had like four faces back here to m maneuver and like manipulate. So like now if I want to go back and like pull out a ring or something, let me, I got my selection options, but like it's going to take a lot more to like grab everything. Well, let me go from here. So I want to select a loop. Yeah, like that. And then I want to select a loop. Is it going to let me do two? Yeah, there we go. So now like I can take this and move it out. Like, and that's like easy, but like if I wanted to only grab like a portion, like it gets very complicated. So um so like the more like the 
the longer you can keep things simple, like and get your basic shapes out, um, like the easier it will be down the road. So I guess I guess is what like I'm trying to say. But um, but like just to kind of show like what that looks like, you can also kind of do it in place here. So like if I wanted to pull this out, this looks like a spark plug, like a very rounded, like nice looking spark plug. But that's kind of the feel I've got. And if I wanted to extrude in some faces, like on a back panel back here. I think the selection options are a little slow, but it's not too bad. I might just not know like how to mess with them. Then I want to go to extrude. I like that it automatically. Oh, uh, maybe just yeah. Let's just redo this. I like that it automatically um, extrudes it for you, so you kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. Um, I feel like the selection options could use a little work. I like that it gives you like presets, you know, um, like in here, like you can select uh, elements. Like you, if you go into the other ones, you can like select loops and rings. Um, like that's cool, but like uh, I think these are a little slow. You can also go back in. Like I could um, select everything in here and then deselect the edges, but I'm just going going through right now. So like if we wanted to push that in, oops. Yeah. So right now I just want to grab these faces on the side. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this again is I saw that I had some selections down here that I didn't want. So it looks good now. You can slide these in. Oops. Ah. I need to find a good way to do this. Okay, so I select so that's everything, and then I want to deselect these edges. The only issue... Okay, so this is good. So you get like selection by angles and you can grow and shrink. So if I want to shrink that down. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm just making sure. I just need to find where these things are and then I'm good. All right, and then we can move this in like that. You can put it off the top. This is probably a good example to really show like how, how holding edges works. So right now I can push this in, and if I wanted to, I could smooth the mesh again. You've got to be careful about going too high with it, um, because if you do eventually, since it is browser based, like it'll kind of collapse on itself. Like the just the like eventually the poly count will get too high. But um, for now, I think this is fine. So I just want to see what this looks like if it's smooth now. Cool. So you can see. Let me turn off my wireframe. You can see that I kind of have this basic shape, but it's still kind of smoothed out, you know, like the edges aren't very clean or crisp. So what I'm going to do is walk that back and I'm going to just apply some holding loops in there to kind of show you what that looks like. Okay, so what I want to apply, I want to see if I can just like so insert vertex might work, bridge, remove. I'm just kind of like looking on to see if I have a good option for the extrusion. Like what if I like grab these rings? And then this one. Mm, I really need a deselect button. So um Part of the reason why I don't have one, I wonder if I can like go back and look at the hotkey, is because I'm using the Maya presets since I'm like used to working with Maya. And in Maya, your alt key is what lets you control the camera. But now that I'm using it to control the camera, I can't use it to do oh there you go. We can I guess I could. Maybe I just have to double click. The same you can't use it to deselect like the pieces in your mesh, but I obviously just did, so maybe it's fine. Okay, and we'll add that together. Okay, cool. So I just wanted to see if there was any other context like I could go from there. It doesn't look like I get the option. That's that's too bad, but it's okay. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just want to kind of see. Let me get my edges back on. Okay. Wonder. Figure out. Nope, it's going to go the wrong way. 
So you could select the face angles, but I think right here it's not going to matter. One sec, I just want to play with deselecting objects real, ha real fast. Hmm. But yeah, no, I can't do it. Yeah, and then control just selects them. Well, I'll see. I bet it's a shortcut, just that I just don't know. Looking for. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in real fast. I don't think I even need to right now. I'm just kind of looking. So a bevel would be good. Can you only bevel at the face level? I'm wondering. I'm just thinking through this as I go. Yeah, deselecting seems pretty key. Well, the thing about selection, just in anything, like if you're working with it, especially like with there's this many faces, is like you want to be able to like draw out this big selection like this. Let me go back to faces. Like draw out a big selection like this. And then you're like, okay, like all this is selected. And then just like go to a different view and just like unselect everything like off the top. Um, because like working with specific like faces groups of faces is so important like in a surface modeler so like yeah it is it is important um but i was just wondering so i think it's just because of the preset i'm using that like um because like if i went to the preferences you can see that i'm using the maya shortcut navigation style like and then there is like a built-in like clara one as well as like 3ds studio max and then like a bunch of other uh packages so like if I went back to Clara like real fast, let me see. It actually might even be. So it's because I'm still in the camera manipulation, right? Yeah, navigation style Maya. Okay, so if I went back this way, so now like I can make my selection, but then I can drag out a box. Yeah, it's just because I'm in like. So it's like, it's just because they're not playing nicely with each other. So what I could do is keep all my Maya shortcuts and then just use this uh, Clara navigation. I just have to get used to it. So that's pivot. Control is track back and forth. Pivot, track, zoom in and out. That's all I need. Okay, so I think I'm back on track. I just have to remember to do that. So this will help a lot, actually, because it's just so important to be able to deselect stuff. And I don't necessarily just like want my uh, controls overriding everything. So we'll go back that way. Okay, so we have this. And then from here, we could just probably do an insert, like off of it. And then scale it. Yeah, and then you get some nice group edges. Cool. Uh, do we want to do the scale in world or do we want to do it in local? Let's see what that looks like. Mm, it looks about the same. I'll probably keep it in world for now. So we'll do our scale in world. Maybe move it up a little bit. So now we can really hold that inside edge. In there. Is Maya very different? Um, not really. It's just like the way you maneuver the camera around and like kind of the hotkeys you use are different. Um, looks like that one came along for the ride. That's okay. Um, and like the hotkeys you use are different. So it's not like this workflow is like pretty similar to anything you d you do in like um, in any kind of uh, surface modeler where you're kind of like pulling points and pushing them around. Um, but it's just like the basic keys that are different. So I wouldn't say it's that different actually. There's more features. Like there's a lot more tools you can use. Um, when I'm going through and like looking for tools, like looking for modeling things, it's like things that I have equivalents for, like in other um, modeling packages that I use all the time. So let's just do a mesh smooth to see what that looks like. Yeah, and now we've got that area a lot more bounded. Yeah, if you see, yeah, so you have that nice like sharp edge, like on the inside. So like if you do any kind of subdivision modeling, like it's important to um, be able to place those like hold loops and things like that. And if you're making like, you know, nice smooth meshes, like that's an important part of it. So yeah, so I've kind of got this shape here. Like it wasn't really intended to be anything. I didn't have anything in mind when I was making it. I just was kind of like wanting to showcase like, or look for certain features. Uh, the thing is, is you can also always go back. Like now that I'm comfortable like working at this level, like now I have that, you know, those edges like held like I want them. 
Um, I can also add like other details and then go back in and hold them and then do my smooth operation later. So I can go back to like my face key right here. Let me turn on my edges just because I like being able to see my edges as I work. Yeah, and now I can show you why um, being able to deselect stuff is so important. So I want to go to this top view and I want to just click and drag the pieces I want. So maybe like this. And what you're going to see is that's going to select every piece like all the way through. But now that I can deselect stuff, I can just unselect that top part and now like I can go back in and I have my selection where before I'd have to click like these one two three four five these ten squares individually like all one at a time so like deselecting just saves you so much time like when you're making these kind of selections um, so now I could go through and just extrude right and create kind of this raised detail okay and then I could go through and again do kind of a camera based selection right here and since I can deselect things, I can just grab this and go, nope, don't want these. Yeah, and it's so much faster. Like, it's so much faster and easy to work with. And then from there, I can do an insert. And I can scale it in, maybe at a local level this time. Let's see what that looks like on the X. Mm, it's a little funky. I kind of want to constrain it to... Yeah, that's not too bad. They're a little funky. I'd kind of want to constrain it to the edges themselves, like the already existing geometry, but I think this is okay. So I'm going to go back in and get my rotate and kind of just maneuver them back into place. Yeah, something like that. So now I'm kind of holding on to those edges too. So if I do another smooth, just to try out everything I have, mesh smooth. Turn off the edges, yeah, and then you're holding that shape pretty well. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, really helpful, yeah, so deselecting and being able to control your selections quickly is, is very helpful. Um, and then I have this kind of thing. All right, let me try working with like multiple meshes real fast. So like, do you have an option to like cut the meshes yourself, like separate meshes? So what we wanna do is go in here, I'm gonna turn on my edges. There's a shortcut for that. I'm just going to start using that. That's five. That's a lot easier. It'll save me time. Keyboard shortcuts are like so important to me because just the amount of time you save is just insane if you use keyboard shortcuts instead. Because like you have to position to the mouse, like it takes two clicks, one, two, or I could just hit five and like have it all the time, all the way up and ready to go. So I'm going to start using that. Okay. And then I'm going to take it back and let's go to a... I think front would work. I'm just like looking at my wireframes. Uh, or right. Right is better actually. So if I have the selection in, I can put it right at the center point. Do my selection like this. And I can delete it. I might need to do one more row, it looks like. Yeah, and then I've got a flat one. Okay. Cool. So then I can work with this, and if I wanted to, I could like rotate it and duplicate it. So I don't know if I can do that, so I'm just kind of seeing it and working with it, because this is just like powerful. I know it's got symmetry right here, like you've got your symmetry options. I want to see, you've got this mirror one. If I were to mirror this, I guess you set your plane here, and we want to put the mirror... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's because I've got both selected. on this real fast. So you have the symmetry mirror option. I just want to see. We'll go ahead and take that off for now. I also like with Clara that you get like this full um, history of everything you used because you don't get it for everything. So like this is a nice feature. So with the operator. So if I'm doing... So we select it. If I'm doing a mirror. I'm just wondering, this might be for other stuff. I just wanted to see if it like gave me an option to just kind of go ahead and pivot it across. Like if I hit enter or something like that, but it doesn't look like it. That's okay though. So if I wanted to say duplicate this, 
I'm just like now about thinking about working with multiple models. So let's check my stuff right here. So I could clone it and then move from here. I'm just looking at my different options. So I can clone, clone it as a copy, not a reference. Okay. And then if we look in our explorer, yeah, we should have multiple boxes. Not that one. I think that one can go. So we have box one and box two. So I can take this and I can just put it underneath like that. I can set my rotation under my transform to make sure it's exactly 180. Like, you can eyeball this kind of stuff in surface modelers, but you usually get a little bit more mileage if you just type them in specifically. Yeah, and then I could line stuff up and merge them. Looks like I've got a little bit sticking out right here, and that's probably because I have a little bit of a translation on here. But I'm just kind of like poking stuff and see what happens right now. So yeah, so you can take your parts, your meshes, and you can duplicate or move them. So that's cool. That's good to know. Um, and then this is also kind of another reason why surface modelers like you need to be careful of because right now I could not 3D print or do anything with this shape um, for the reason because it has no thickness. Like basically um, all the computer knows is that I have a inside and an outside of a 2D like mesh, you know, like this has been warped and like this actual plane that we're looking at has no geometry, it has no thickness. We could add geometry to it, like um, like I could grab it. I'll just do this now. Like I could grab it and go to my faces, grab them all, and like and I could do an extrusion, right? Like I could extrude thickness out of it. So something like this. Let me go. I wonder, do I have extrusion options? I'm just looking at scene. These are, like I said, thanks for sticking with me while I'm just figuring stuff out. Like, I'm just looking for, um, for my models. Yeah, so inside my extrude, I've got my length and my extrusion type. So I could adjust this link down to, like, say, zero to start with. And then it doesn't show. And then I've got the inset option. Like, I'm wondering, Let's say if I inset it one. Yeah, I think the inset is the same inset function I've been using with the insert. One sec, I'm just playing with this to see. So if I gave it an inset of, let's say, two or an offset, and then I put it out one. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Let me scale this back down. Okay, so I'm just checking and seeing. It looks like it's not doing too much with it right now. So we'll just leave the offset alone right now. And we can take the length and we'll put it back to like 0.1. Put it back to zero actually. Okay, and then we're gonna extrude it. Whoops, already have an extrusion. We're going to scale it, that's what I meant to say. We can take it and scale it like outwards or inwards. So what that's going to do is now that I've like extruded everything, you know, along its scale, like I can deselect it and now like it has like this implied thickness like along all its edges, which is cool and good to know. Okay. But we'll just take it back to a 2D shape. I wonder how far back I can go. There's probably some limit to it. So yeah, this is back to where I had the full 3D shape. Okay. I think right now I'm gonna actually work on, I think I have enough to like work on some more like 3D stuff and like work with multiple objects, but I was just kind of seeing like the mesh creation tools, like what's kind of in the suite. So we're just gonna go back to object selection and we're gonna just start fresh with this. Yeah, so now it has some mass, exactly. <laughs> you know, so like now it can exist in the real world because it actually has thickness. Um, because 3D printers are good, but they can't print, ob they've come a long way, but they can't print objects with zero thickness. Um, it, just, it just isn't possible at this point, who knows? Because like, think of the thinnest material you can like think of, you know, like something so fragile, like it would break, like as soon as you touch it, and like that material has thickness.
just very little, very little thickness. Okay, so I think there's like two ways that I like to get started when I make an object. The first is uh, with something called box modeling. Like if I'm drawing something out, whereas like I start with a cube and then I like just keep adding detail like as I need it until like I make like a face or something, you know, or, um, or an object. I think I want to stay away from organics today and just kind of like work with you know basic tools but um, so one way is to start with a box and I do that a lot but there's also you can start with a plane especially if you're working with uh, surface modeling for the reasons I kind of talked about earlier so like if I was gonna make like a chair or something so like for like the thicker things that look more like a box like maybe the back of the seat and stuff it would make sense to you know, use a box for that. But if I have like a really organic shape or something like that, or just something that flows or needs a loop, um, what I can do is kind of create like a basis for this. And I can do this by extruding edges. So I've got this edit edge extrude option. So what I can do is I can kind of start drawing out the shape I want. So let me select it. What are you doing shape? Let me jump over here real fast. There we go. And I can hit the extrude button. And then you'll see what I can do from there is I can just start like drawing out this shape. Oops, not the scale. So like if I want to make like, you know, like an armrest kind of shape, you know, like the office chairs have like that loop, like armrest sometimes where they go like all the way back around into the chair. Like what I can do is I can take this and I can start making my extrusions. So they can take this and I can just extrude it again. Yeah, just like this. And you can see I'm starting to build out this shape. And I'm just doing it from extrusions. And they don't have to be perfect, right? Like you don't need perfect extrusions right now. You can even do it. Oh, that's, that's a cool feature. I like that. You can just kind of get the middle mouse button and just drag out your extrusions. And I can just keep going. You know, like drag out my extrusion, position it. And these can always be like fixed later, right? Like, um, like they're not like locked in stone, set in stone or anything. So I can just keep dragging. And like, again, you kind of want to keep it simple. You actually don't want to use too many at this point. You can always go back and add in like more loops or something later if you need to. So I'm just going to put in a few more. Do my extrusion. Yep. Start curving it back up. Extrude. If I need to reposition it after the extrusion, I can extrude. And if there's a hotkey for extrude, that's when it gets really helpful. Because I can go from here. But then go ahead and maybe do one more and then we'll just do a bridge. So let me grab this edge, do an extrusion like this. And then we can either do another extrusion, just the same way we've been doing, or we can just grab these two edges like this got them both selected and then you can just hit bridge and then you can like put in as many or few as you need in this case I'm going to turn down the segments to zero because I just want to fill that gap All right, and then we have our shape and then from here you can just like modify it as needed and if I was like looking at this from the side you know like here's my side view of it like usually I'd go in and clean this up now so I'd go into my vertex mode and I just start like dragging these points around like as needed and, like so if I want to refine this shape a little bit because I've got my basics right so now like this is when I can go back in and clean it up so I can make like a more attractive uh, silhouette for it and you can do this with anything this is just like one example like if say like if I wanted like a gentler curve right here like I can move this point over and I could add a whole new point like in back here like I could add a new uh, line so it's just like you know just the kind of the methods of getting started so we'll bring this one in and you know, just make a nicer loop. There we go. Happy little armchair loop. Maybe bring this up a little bit. I'm guessing the top of the armchair should be like flat, but. And if I feel like it's too big, I can grab lots of loops at once, like all these points, and I can bring them all in, you know, something like that. So you have like a lot of freedom to work. And when you're in 2D, it's easy to see 
like what you need to adjust and make. Like if I want to like curve this whole side up a little bit, I can do that. Okay. What you're going to see is that it doesn't matter like that they're a little segmented, you know, like that like it likes looking a little blocky and geometric because you can just smooth it, right? Like we've seen in the butt before. So that's like a nice like kind of like inverted shape. I think I'm good with that. Yeah, it's like a first draft, you know, that's how you can think about it. Um, so if I have this on here, you know, like I have this full shape. Right now it's too wide. It looks like it's moved off a little bit too. So I'm just going to um, clean these edges up. A good way to clean up edges like this, like if like they've gotten off track and they're floating all over the place, is you can just grab all the vertices, hit your scale tool, and then just scale them into each other, like on one axis. And then like, boom, all your edges are lined up again. Um, there's other ways you can do it too, but this one like works really well across pretty much every modeling application. So like my edges were all off of each other, but, like, nope. Now they're good. So if you look, yep, everything's lined up, looks neat. Okay, and then it's a little wide at this point, so I'm just gonna take my top and I'm just gonna move it in. Um, if you wanted to keep everything like on the origin, you know, kind of like on the center line, you can grab both sides and you can just scale everything in. And then that'll do it uniformly. I think I've already like moved off a little bit, so it's not too big a deal, but just to keep in mind. So like then I kind of have this basic like armrest shape right here. And I can like grab it, and you can do an extrusion. Probably not in that direction. <laughs> yeah, that's looking more like what I want to do. Group local normals. What about individual polygons? No, that's going to divide it. So we'll do we'll do uh, local normals instead. And I want to turn this to zero. And I have, want to have a little bit more control over it. Okay. We're going to go to scale. And we're going to try to scale in separate directions as we go. Because that gives us a little more control over the overall shape. And doing this, you can add, like, you know, like a little bit of thickness. Um, a lot of ones will have, like, an extrusion tool will have, like, an offset, too. So, like, it will offset everything, like, a specific distance. So, like, 0.1, you know, along each normal. A normal is just the direction like the the plane is facing, so like um, like perpendicular to it. So like the normal for this one would be shooting off like that way. The normal for this one, like on the bottom, would be like shooting off down that way. Like it's just a way of like meshes knowing which way is inside and outside. So I kind of have this. So now it has thickness. Um, now it's got this shape. And what I can do is remember I can put in these holding loops that I talked about earlier. Uh oh, what's the back doing? Okay. So, yeah, now it's very uniform, absolutely. So what I want to do in the back here is I see, it looks like, oh, it looks like we're just lacking one. Like it looks like it's extruding edges and not the faces. I want to make sure though. So if I select that one, yeah, it goes straight through. Okay, we can fix this. So all we need to do is go through the edges like this, and the edges, whoops, edges like this, edges like this, and we do a bridge. <laughs> Maybe not in that, that way. We'll take it down to zero. Shouldn't be a twist or anything. I might have to give it some stuff to get started. So what it's doing is it is bridging everything, but it's bridging them like one higher than it should. So I'm gonna give it a reference point and start over. So rather than like doing them all at once, let's do a couple to give them some uh, info. And then we'll go back and try to bridge everything. Yeah, that looks better. Too many segments still, but that's easily fixed. Okay, so now we've done one bridge. And let's do a couple. I'm just gonna select a few. We're gonna bridge these two. I wonder if there's like a default bridge section I can set, because I almost always want my segments to be zero. Okay, so now that I have those, maybe it can do a better job of identifying um, which segments it needs to go to. And it might be my fault for like, there might be like a like an edge order in here and I might have messed with it. Um, so it might not even be the program, it might just be me. Okay, so let's see this. Are you gonna give me a clean bridge? No, well, maybe. Yeah, and then it's nice and clean. Yeah, cool, cool. 
So you can do that to um, snap in and finish off completing any geometry that you have. Okay, so that looks good. And then what you can do from here is you can kind of get a preview. Yeah, the fan of the twist looks very fancy. It, it does, but yeah, like if you like smooth it in a second, like it's gonna augment everything. You know, like everything's gonna get like really messed up and like put out of order. So to get a preview of what this looks like, we can do like a mesh smooth on it. And that looks pretty ergonomic like right now um, because again like it's your first draft we can also do it put it up another subdivision level and you can kind of get a look an idea of like what we're doing here yeah so that's not too bad ergonomic like I said that's the that's the word I'm looking for right here so all we were doing before with this was just kind of making a template I don't think any of the edges need to be held uh, I think like this whole thing looks pretty much like what I want an office chair to look like but if you wanted to block in like some more of those um, edges on the side you could so like what you would do is um, we'd go to the face selection mode let's let's duplicate it like cuz like I feel like uh, giving you like a visual reference is better so we'll clone it as a copy and then we'll slide this one over also I mean this makes sense because it's a chair right like eventually you would need to because you have one armrest on each side but like you'd slide one over you know like this and if we want to hold the edges versus not holding them, like let's let's show like an image of what that would look like. Let me get out of this mode so you can like see the screen a little bit later, a little bit better. Let me go through and I'm just gonna select all these faces. Mm, let's do only the outside ones. I was wondering, yeah, grow won't work here. This is also a hard shape to do the uh, deselect on <laughs> because like if you grabbed one like on one side like it'd be hard to grab the other so I'm just gonna walk it around. There's not too many faces to select because again we're staying simple. Yeah. Get that one. Alright, cool. So we've got our selection. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up and we're gonna insert. We could also um, we could also slice plane. Slice plane would be so much faster. You don't even have to select anything like for a slice plane. Like here, let's just do that. Let's select the whole thing. We'll do a slice plane, or is it a cut plane? No, I'm questioning everything I've ever done. Oh, I see. Cool. Okay. So let's do this instead. Let's go do a cut plane. But if we're gonna do this, we're gonna we need to do it in the wireframe. So I'm going to do a cut plane function. No, oh, it's this one. Okay. And we're going to take this and we're going to just draw it right down the edge. Yep. Okay, and then it's going to give me my plane I want to cut with. And then I can also change that rotation to make it exactly 90 which is important, and then the Z can be zero. Because like sometimes you can go off, you know, like off a little bit and it's totally fine. Okay, and then we cut it, and then we collapse. Boom, and we've got our edge loop. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. So like we go through and then we use the cut plane. It doesn't really matter where I draw it because I can just mess with it once it's been made. Okay, then we have this and we can clean this up again. Make this zero. Make this one negative 90. You could probably also make it 90. It usually doesn't matter. And then we could move the center if we wanted. Like right now this is a little far to the outside. I'm wondering, I wonder if you could just like move the plane without messing with it. So that's on the x-axis I think. Or no, it's on the y. So if we put it at like negative 4. Oh yeah, now it's like gone. That's funny. Okay. I'm just wondering if we could move it. We can move the edge after the case. So we're good. We'll just say enter. We'll collapse it. Okay. So from here, now we can take this whole edge and move it. Give me the option to grab this edge. Yeah, and it will just grab the entire thing. We also want to grab the inside edge though, because a cut operation is going to take you all the way through. So like both sides are going to have a cut on it. And then we're going to grab this inside. 
And then what we can do is just move it like wherever we need to. And then we can use the top for this to make sure it's like right where we want it. So we can just like put it right there and we can kind of hold this edge. So this will be a good example of like what holding an edge looks like, like back and forth. Like if you're doing this kind of subdivision modeling. So we went through all that. We made some, we made an armchair uh, armrest, one that has held edges and one that does not. Let me go back. We can just do this uh, by showing our edges. Yeah, these five. So only thing we've done here is just added some um, held edges to the side. This one has nothing. And then we're just going to subdivide both of them. We're going to smooth them both out. I think we can just do this at the same time. So mesh smooth, yep. And let's go up a couple subdivisions. Let me turn these off. What does that look like? Maybe one more? Yeah, OK. So you can kind of see the difference, like right when we've held the edges uh, versus when we haven't. So for this one, you see that like the whole thing bubbles, you know, and like the inside rounds off as well. Um, and for this one, you see that you've gotten these held edges, so it maintains some of that thickness. So like if we toggle it, you can see that it's averaging these edges, so it's just putting more on the side right here. Whereas this one's distributing them like across the entire entirety. I feel like this one isn't smoothing as cleanly as it should. How many sub? Yeah, you haven't. You didn't do all the subdivision levels. You just did one. Huh. Okay. Now that's more like what it would look like. Yeah. So you can see that since we've held the edges, it maintains more of that volume versus this one where it has less. Honestly, I think this one looks more like what I'd expect like a like an armchair to be. Like they're usually pretty thin plastic, but um, you can kind of see the difference between them. Okay. So that's just like a teachable moment. So since we've got our armrests in. We're going to go ahead and make the um, seat of the chair. So I think with that, we'll start with a cube. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to keep this on the origin a little bit more. So I'm going to go to my top view, just because this is super handy about like blocking stuff out. And I'm going to keep the cube where it is, but I am going to move these armrests over a bit. Uh, first, I'm going to just decide how big it should be kind of using them as their point, and then I'm going to scale. So we're just blocking out right now. We'll scale this up a little bit and scale it out a little bit. So we're about seat size. Then we'll move these armrests kind of where they need to go. And we can always delete or copy them again later. And we can select both at once since we're moving in world space. Um, sometimes if you move things in local space and one is like transformed like in a different way like sometimes they'll like fly away from each other when you move them one direction right now they have the same orientation so it's fine but like if I took this one and like pivoted it like 90 degrees let's say yeah that's fine and then we tried to move both together let's see if I can get a, a good view on this oh no they're moving together really well that's too bad sometimes they like just like fly apart from each other I'm not going to complain because you don't want that. Like you never want that to happen, but it is it is funny. It is funny when it occurs. Okay. So block where these are out and I'm going to start blocking out a lot more of the scene right now because generally I wouldn't um generally I wouldn't like do this much modeling right off the start. Like I wouldn't smooth it and subdivide it. It's just kind of to show you what it looks like. Usually I'd start by like blocking out the proportions and making everything look whoops using my keyboard shortcuts that don't exist and blocking out the proportions. So I'm going to clone this. Okay. Make a copy. Move it back here. And then we're just going to rotate it. If you have a, um, we're still in local space. Let's go back to world for a second. And keep rotating it. Go something more like this. So we're starting to like put together these chair pieces. Um, backrest is longer, not that way. This is a good time we'd want to go into local. Um, because again, since we've applied a rotation, we just want to elongate it in the way that it already is. So this is when a local smooth makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we've got something like this. And this is generally how I would start. Like I'd um, go in and block out my shapes, you know, things like that. Um, and then I'd start adding more detail because you always have the opportunity to add more. Again, I might do this with a plane, like if I wanted a more organic shape, but you can also do it with a cube. And I'm gonna like kind of show what that looks like. 
So what we want to do is this looks like a very stiff chair. Like it's not kind of what we'd want to sit in. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make some cuts. So we're going to use this cut tool. Hmm. Or is it slice? I just want to see. I guess both work. Oh, slice kind of puts it in half. Then, then do I have control? That's cool. That's a cool feature. I like that. Boom. And now it's gone. Okay. But we want to use cuts in this case. Do, 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 do. So it's already. Oh, and if you leave it in local, this is super. This is super useful. If you leave it in local, it actually changes like how it's put in place. Okay. So we want to make some cuts here, but we also want them not on this edge. So we want to flip this 90 degrees. Okay, cool. And then we want to put, ah, I'm sorry everyone looking at home. Yeah, 90 degrees, negative 90, it doesn't matter. They get you to the same point. Orientation doesn't matter that much on this one. And then I can take it and I can just do a cut here. Like that's fine. Like I can just go ahead and collapse this one. And what that's going to do is if I look at the mesh now, turn on five, you'll see that I've cut this right in the middle. Like I put a poly loop in here. That's kind of what I say it. Yeah, without any legs, it reminds me of an airplane seat. Yeah, I need to make it like a lot narrower though and put like three right beside it and make sure that they're like an inch from the ground so you have no leg room. Um, but I'm gonna go through and then from here, like the more cuts you have, you can start like manipulating the shape of the mesh and I'm gonna do that in a second. So first I'm going to grab a couple more cuts so again, we know we want it to be 90 on the local rotation, and then we can scale it up, something like this. It doesn't really matter exactly where it goes, again, because we're gonna move it, but we'll collapse. And then we're gonna do one more cut, again, 90 degrees, and we're gonna move it down. And all we're doing is just adding geometry right here, because we want to be able to move it, because right now it's just a cube. And this is good, but we need to change the shape of it if needed. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump back to my side view because uh, this is how I do my modeling to make sure everything stays nice and orthographic. Is I'm gonna go into vertices. You could use edges too, but vertices just works better. And now what I can do is I can start messing with the shape of the seat. We'll do world for this. So like I can start scaling this back if I need to. If I feel like this is not looking right, I can rotate the vertices like to add more thickness or like change the basic shape. So something like this. Um, if I feel like I need more segments in between, I can come in here. It would be really handy if I could just draw. Let me see if I can just draw this out. Because I just kind of want to slice through right here. Like if I cut plane, like I feel like I had this option earlier. Hmm. I think it just depends whether you're in 2D or 3D space. Because if you're in a side view, you're not in perspective. Like, you can't work around. But, like, what if I grab this and then deselected that? And then I just want to cut. Like, I just want to cut in on that plane. Because I want to speed it up if I can. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Because then I can just add them all along. Yeah, so exciting. Okay. That's good, and that's good to know, because I really just want to speed up that workflow, like, as much as I can, because it gives me more time to, um, like, think about art, and less time to just kind of, like, look at it and do whatever we're doing. So that's good to know. So we're going to add this here, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do my cut plane. Oh, that's so much faster. And then we can collapse. Yeah, and I can draw all, out all these segments I need for the geometry. And then if they're ever like the cut is off, like it doesn't matter because I can go back in, grab my vertices, and I can start, you know, moving them around, like wherever they need to go. So if I want these to come back a little bit more, I can. And then this is the thing. Uh, you don't want to add too many all at once because then you kind of like have to wrangle them all and like make them all look pretty. Um, because like a lot of times you need to like be watching your curves and stuff. What I mean by that is like your curve should like look aesthetically pleasing. Like I have like this lumpy spot in the middle right now uh, and you really like want to kind of clean that up if you can. Because when you smooth it, like it'll take care of some of it, 
but like um, not everything. Usually office chairs like kind of like curve back at the start and then they kind of come back to meet you like on your upper back. So I'm going to try to get that kind of S curve going on here. Something kind of like this. I think we can rotate this a little bit. Maybe back a little bit. Give me my selector. There we go. Okay. Maybe want to bring this back even a little bit more. Because you want to kind of like fall into it like a like a little egg, you know? Just like fit neatly in this curve and then get your lower back back a little bit later. And the nice thing about subdivision modeling is you can be kind of messy. Like, whoops. Like you don't have to be like exactly on point because one is your subdivisions are going to take care of it and like you're going to come back to it anyway. So I'll move this down, move this over. And this is all you're doing. You're just kind of wrangling the points right here. Like like any any modeling project, you see that like, you know, like looks beautiful, you know, like that it's like, "Oh my gosh, how'd they do that?" Like most of it was done right here. Like this is where most of the time went into where people just like all right, time to push some vertices around, you know, like, and then, and then what you want to kind of do, like, is get to this point kind of where I'm getting right now, where you've kind of got like an aesthetic curve, like just something that kind of looks good or at least good enough. I'll just move this in. And this kind of modeling is really good for these kind of like man-made objects. Like I do, I do a lot with like digital sculpting too. And like, that's great, but it would be very hard to make a chair with digital sculpting, like um, like CAD and surface modeling are kind of where it's at if you want to make these kind of like man-made shapes. Okay, cool. So we'll scale this in. I'm going to move this one back just a little bit more. Maybe bring it down a little bit too. And then I need to go back and look at my whole scene because I don't know if I've like totally lost the sense of the scale and perspective. No, I think that's fine. I feel I feel like it still makes sense. And now what we can do is we can do a quick subdivide on it. We can smooth it out and see what it looks like. Mesh smooth. That's not too bad. I feel like we want to make it a little bit bigger and hold the bottom a little bit. So what we'll do now that we know like it looks that way is I'm going to put a cut down at the bottom to hold this edge. So real fast, we're going to grab our faces. And, yeah, just make sure they're all, all grab. Yep. And then we'll do a quick cut down here. Yep, just like that. I like that we can still position it after the fact. Yeah, like as I get more comfortable with Clara's tools, like I think I, I think I see what I like about it. Okay, so we want to hold this bottom edge real fast. Uh, we can also add more cuts, not really in this perspective, but we can add them on this way if we needed to as well. Yeah, starting to look pretty comfy. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but we'll go from here. Just real fast, I want to see. I want to see what it looks like. So we'll do a smooth real fast. Yeah, and then we kind of get that bottom held a bit more. And I think it's fine if it curves at the top. That's probably actually kind of ideal. And what I want to do. Yeah, this looks fine. We'll put this in here to start blocking it in. Um, what we'll do here now is, I think I want to make like a pad for the top. So this will be a good way to kind of showcase what you can do. So we'll just drop in another cube. Because again, if we're making cube shapes, easiest thing to do is just bring in more cubes and start cutting them up. Move this back a bit. Yeah, we're going to make a pad for maybe the top and the bottom right in here. Like, so this will be the main shape, but then we'll pad it a bit. With some with some comfy shapes, slide it out. Cause you said it was uh, looking pretty comfy. Well, we're gonna turn that comfiness factor up even more, and we're gonna duplicate another one or clone, I guess, in uh, Clara Clara terms. Oops, too many. And then we are gonna change the scale a little bit, scale it up a little bit here. Mm, do we need to rotate it? I don't think we need to at this point. Oops. I think we're going to leave it alone for now and then we're just going to cut it up. So we have these two pads which are going to become comfy, I promise. They just aren't quite there yet. 
and then we're going to go in and we're going to just do the same process that we've been doing. We're going to add points, subdivide it, and make it smooth uh, and go from there. So what I want to do is grab my cut tool. Yeah, each new cube uh, increases comfiness by 50%, at least 50%. Nine out of 10 doctors agree. So same thing for this. Um, I don't even know, like, do we have a cut? Do we have to do it from the face menu? I'm just wondering. I'm just trying, like, the whole time, like, I am modeling here, but I'm also figuring it out. Like, I'm finding the parts of my toolkit that I need, you know, like in any modeling application, and I'm seeing how they work inside of Clara. Which so far, like, I feel like I've had some hangups, but I think overall it's been going well. Okay, it does look like you need to select a face range, and then you can use cut plane, which is probably for the best, because it probably keeps you from cutting faces that you don't want to. But I'm just puzzling it out as I go. So I want one there. Collapse it. I want one, again, you gotta select it. And then if I have it selected, I can't do it yet. So we'll go back to W. Give me the wireframe real fast. Eh. There we go. I'm like, let me select. I promise. I'll never do anything bad again. Okay, there we go. And then we'll cut here as well. And we'll collapse that. Okay. So now we kind of have some stuff to work with in here, and then we can position the vertices. Okay, so I'll grab my vertexes. Vertexes isn't a word. It should be vertices. And I'm going to drag in these top two a little bit because we're going to, again, we're looking for comfiness. Hmm, looks like I didn't select all the way through. Give me one more shot. I'm going to jump in here to troubleshoot. Oh no, I'm just confused. Okay, yeah, it's totally doing fine. Uh, I'm not used to the bounding box, like showing up in these orthographic views, but like that's all that's happening is I'm just seeing the bounding box. Okay, and then we're gonna scale these in a little bit, just like this. Okay, so that's gonna kind of give a pillow effect when it does end up being smooth. So I'm just like looking at the back right now. The whole thing can probably be rotated, so we'll do that a little bit, kind of position it, merge it in a little bit, all right. Cool, cool. And then I just want to see a quick smooth, just to want to see what it looks like or is looking like. Hmm. Okay, so I don't like that so much. It's really shrinking it into the middle. So this is a good case for uh, we need to have hold edges put on each side right here, because what I'm seeing in the smooth is that it's really pulling these edges towards the middle, and it's got a very sharp edge at the at the start right now. And the reason for that is just there's this big expanse with no edges, like anywhere at all. So like to average, you know, this side and this side, like it has to pull them like a quarter of the way in. Like it has to pull them really far in. But if you give it a hold edge, like right here on the edge, all of a sudden it only needs to pull it in like just like a little bit because there's an edge there. So you're always thinking about like, you know, the averages when you're, when you're doing these smoothing and putting it in. So all we need to do for that is we need to cut some more planes. That's, that's all we're doing here. Uh, an interesting thing in Clara I found is that if you want to hide stuff, like say like that we've gotten this to a point where we are happy with it, we can take it out by pressing the H key. And then if you go back to your explorer, like you can find this box one that's hidden that I've selected. Also you can like rename your stuff, you know, like so I know what's what. So I could say like back seat for like this and then for, you know, the top one I could say instead of this just being box four. Like I could see like head pillow, you know, like if I, it was even better, like I'd give it like a naming convention. Like this is like, you know, like backseat underscore like pillow, you know, and stuff like that. But this is good enough for my purposes. It'll let me know. And then instead of being box three, this can be like body pillow because that's like gonna get your back. Maybe back, back pillow makes more sense because that's where this cradling, it's cradling your back. Back pillow. Okay, so now they have nice names. Like I could go through and rename everything, but I think this is good for right now because this is what I'm working on. But especially when you're like hiding stuff, <laughs> you want to know what you hid because then you're like, oh wait, where did that go? Like which box is it? And now I know it's the back seat, so I can click on it in the outliner over here and just bring it back if I need it. But for right now, I'm going to hide it. 
uh, because I don't want it messing with my multiple views when I go in and mess with this. Okay. Yeah. So I've got the front right here, and this is the view I want. So for now, I want to select this one. I'm going to go back to my tools, and I want to grab my faces because I want to grab these right here, and I want to do some cuts. Uh, is that the way I want to go? Actually, hold on. I need to. I forgot what I was doing. So I need to hold here and here. So I actually need to cut these. All right, we're good. So I'm going to go back in and do my cut plane. I'm just going to cut on the edges right here. Yeah, just like this. And then I can also straighten up this rotation, I think, a little bit too. Um, because everything's nice and oriented. And we'll collapse that. We'll do another cut plane on this one. This cut plane isn't the, the cleanest like cut I've seen. Um, there are other ones that you know, like I think I think work a little bit better, but I th like in other modeling packages I've seen. But I think this is working just fine for our purposes. And there might even be a better way to do it. Like this just might be the way I'm doing it right now. Okay. Now that we've got it, we can grab these edges. I'm gonna go back here to make sure I got them all. Yep. And then I can just slide this over a little bit so that they're about equal. They don't have to be exactly equal. Uh, they don't have to be exactly equal, but um, it's it's a good process to go through. Yeah, it is always nice to be able to name things. Like, if you're ever like, I mean, it's like if you're coding, if you're you know working with three D art where you've got like a lot of objects, uh, <laughs> name your stuff, comment on your stuff because it's just gonna make it so much easier. Like, it really will. It takes like five minutes and it and it saves you so much time. Okay, man, I think I did the wrong pillow. Even it doesn't matter. This one will need to be held too. All right, we'll go back and do this. You can you can name everything you want, but if you can't organize your thought process, like it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. I just meant to do it up on this one because this was the one we were working on. So I'm gonna do another cut plane. We'll have to do it eventually, you know, for the bottom, so it's fine. But it was not what we needed at the time, so we'll cut that. Again, I like to zero this out so I know that it's totally in line and lined up, and then I collapse it. Cut plane. Well, select. Now cut plane, and then zero it out. Okay, collapse it, and there we go. And like I said, these don't need to be lined up because after the fact, you can always just grab the loop, and you can just drag it wherever you need it. So like right there in the edge. And this is also nice because if you feel like um, you're holding too much of the edge, sorry, one sec. If you feel like you're holding too much of the edge you can also like pull it out more and it will soften like soften the edge after you smooth it and this is just kind of how the subdivision modeling works like um where you're always kind of like blocking out your shape smoothing it uh seeing what needs to be harder or softer you know on the edges and then um going back and making those changes so now that i have a couple edges holding this pillow i'm going to go ahead and smooth it yeah that looks way better okay so now, just because we added those edges on the side, you now see that it's holding that shape a lot better. And that's kind of what we want for our final shape to look like. You know, like kind of got the soft round outside, but it still has like the, the seams on the, on the other side. So if we turn that off, yep, that looks good. And if we want to bring our seat back, now that we've done that, we can go to back seat and we can toggle H to pull it back in. We can kind of get like a look at what we're doing. So we have one seat put in, and now we can do the same thing for this shape as we're doing, just kind of conforming everything to the, the model of the chair. This is a pretty aggressive office chair, if I'm honest, but I think it's fine. We'll, we'll make it work. Like, I don't think this is encouraging good posture. Like, it's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of strong. Oops, there we go. Okay, so back to work. And again, we're just going to make some cuts in here, and we're going to pull it into place okay eventually we'll go back in and we'll probably delete this one out uh just because like i said this one is thicker kind of than i want for my needs i feel like this one looks a lot more like what you'd see like on an actual chair uh, but for now it's fine we're just kind of place holding it so we can get some good shots of this chair that we're making we're doing on time not too bad we've got maybe another half hour a little bit of water break in. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my tools menu. Um, something nice about Clara is you don't really need to save your scene because everything is saved like on your um, cloud profile. Like, you know, like it's auto saving it to like whatever state your scene is in at any moment. You can still save it out. Like you can still like save it or export it. I guess you can't save it because it's like always being saved, but you can always export it, you know, like as a, like as a default file, like Clara archive, um, you know, it was like the scene file. So if you want to save different versions of it, you can save it out, but like you can export it to like all these different, you know, kind of files. So like you can export it as like an Autodesk FBX file. You can export it as a blender scene file, you know, like GLTF files, um, like anything that you need to, it's got a pretty solid exporter, you know, SDL, if you want to 3d print it. It's got a lot of good uh, file types for export. So, like, there is a lot of things you can do to save the scene, but you don't need to worry about it. Like, you don't need to worry about saving constantly, which is nice. I like that a lot in um, cloud-based apps. And most browsers are. Most browser programs are at this point. So, it's a, it's a handy tool. Yeah, it's got a bunch of features, but it's not too aggressive. I think that's a good way to talk about it. It's more it's more focused in what it does. Like it's it's a fairly focused program, um, and it's got a pretty good modeling toolkit. Yeah, I usually do too. Uh, like like I forget to save my stuff as I go as well, um, and it's like bitten me so many times. And like next time, and like it'll be the kind of thing where it's like I'm gonna save all the time, you know, and then um. And then I save that way for like maybe a month, maybe, maybe, maybe it's like a week. And then I forget to do it again. And then everything gets deleted and I'm like, oh man, this time you're going to change Ian. And then, and then I never do. So maybe one day. So cloud, I guess that comes back to uh, cloud storage and like auto saving is a great feature. It just makes stuff easy for, for us artists. We don't need to think about it as much. Okay, so I'm going to do some cuts on this one, and this time we're going to cut in this way. So before we were um, cutting down here to hold the edges, but now we're going to cut back because we want to conform it. Whoops, we want to conform it to the shape of this seat and make a good cushion. So I'm going to go to a side view, and I don't think I need to take these out. If I felt like these were in the way, I would delete them out, but I think they're fine for right now. So I've already got my stuff selected, so I'm going to go ahead and do a cut plane. Cut right there, collapse. These can go wherever because they uh, don't need to be saved the same. All right, cut plane. We'll do a third one down here at the bottom after this, collapse. And we're going to cut plane. And this is more box modeling. You know, like I said, like we could do this with planes as well and kind of like sketch out the shape we wanted. But uh, a lot of times it's easier just to do it with boxes and like kind of modify it because like it's just got a boxy shape. Like lots of shapes in the world have like boxy shapes, especially among man-made things. So like if, and when I say box modeling, that doesn't mean we just have to use cubes. Like we could do the same thing with like cylinders or spheres. Um, it just, they're a little harder to work with because um, boxes are nice and easy to, you know, cut into uh, quads, you know, like four, uh, four sided polygons. Um, so they're easy to work with. Like a cylinder isn't. Like if I brought in like a like a cylinder primitive, like and you wanted to take a look at the wireframe, like you're gonna notice. Oh, let me get it. You're gonna notice when you look at it that like a cylinder, like every one of these points, like joins into this center point. So it's easy to work with. Like if you're like modifying something on the outside, but if you're like going on the top, it's like not easy to make these cuts because you get into some weird geometry. And it's like the same thing with a sphere. Like if I brought like a sphere in here. Like you, you see that like the standard like primitives like all like combine into a pole like up here surrounded by triangles. Like and if you wanted to like you know make the changes in there like it's just a little bit harder. It's easy if it's like already a sphere and you just need to add some detail. Like I could just like grab like a like a loop here. Can you let me grab a whole loop? Let me just grab two edges. No, I don't think it's gonna work either. We'll just uh, go big real fast. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, this is the view I want. So I could go in here and like grab like a loop. And then I could come back and then like if I just wanted to like extrude that off the surface. No, stop. Zero and then we're gonna do local normals. 
So like if I wanted to like, you know, like cut in, you know, like detail, like that's very easy to do. You know, like if I wanted to like extrude de detail out, like that's very easy to do. It's very easy to add like these things on the outside surface. But if you wanted to do the same thing that like ran through the center, like top to bottom, like that'd be very difficult because um, you're going to run into like how these poles intersect. And there's ways to make, uh, you know, like clean spheres, like, uh, like I'll show you real fast, like just a handy tool that if you ever want like a really a clean sphere that doesn't do that. What you can do is grab a cube. Again, we it just always comes back to cubes. It's because you want to work in polygons. Like if you can help it, like polygons are just so much easier to work with than like triangles. So you can go here and you can smooth out a cube. And if you keep smoothing it, oh look, it becomes a sphere and it has nice geometry all the way around. Like so, you can work with it that way. So you can generate. You can generate spheres this way that have like nice topology uh, that you can work with, and it's like totally fun. Like, look, yep, I got a sphere. Just frame on it. So it's like however you want to do it. So just like just like life hacks and things like that, and you can do the same thing. Um, like you can do the same thing with cylinders. Like I usually like have like a like a default cylinder like that I have, and what I'll do is like I'll make my own like clean cylinders rather than like use the defaults. So like what I'll do is like I'll make a cylinder. Um, it's important for the radial segments. I think I can do 16. Yeah, 16. And like I could just cut out all the faces, like just be gone faces. And then what you can do, this might take like more work than uh, I want to spend time on, but I'll show you. Like you can take out the faces and then you can um, grab your edges like this. Whoops. Keep forgetting control, not shift. The only problem with knowing like or figuring out a bunch of 3D apps is some things get easier. Like you know like what stuff to look for, but like you also have the hotkeys in your brain. And I can bridge them like this and I can turn this down. And then what I can do is I can grab my faces I'm just gonna try to do this kind of quick and dirty. But I can grab my faces and then I can do a cut right here. Cut plane. Maybe like right here. Turn this to zero. Whoop. That was the wrong one, but I think I can move it. Can I move it? I can with my local center. So that's an X move. So was it like point one? Yeah, so maybe a little bit more like point 0.2 yeah we'll say point 0.2 that's fine so I'll do my cut right there and then I'm gonna do another cut cut it down cut plane something like that yeah my rotation is actually really clean huh I didn't think it would would be but collapse maybe it's snapping it for me okay and then what you can do from here just handy handy tips handy topology tips, uh, turn my view back on, is now you can make a bridge. Let me clean this up a little bit. No, we'll do it later. Like, I always like want to clean stuff up now, and I'm like, just do it later. Just do it later. You can always clean it later. Oh, we need to do one more cut. I'm sorry. We need to cut it right down the middle. So we'll select that, and we'll do a cut right down the middle, change that rotation to 90, yep looks good, collapse it, okay and then this gives you your framework so now all you have to do to like make like a nice clean cylinder is you just have to bridge these edges together and I'm just gonna do it real fast right here so grab my edges, this one, this one, this one, and this one, bridge Turn that to zero. This one and this one. Bridge to this one and this one. Bridge. Turn this to zero. And then what you can do from here is you can fill in these edges. I'm going to clean this up a little bit first because some of these are a little off. Um, but then you can fill in these side ones with quads and it's like it's a magical cylinder, you know, that is now capped with quads instead of a bunch of triangles that are hard to work with. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just making sure that these are lined up. Yeah, that looks good. And then all I have to do now is I can just do one more bridge, or four more bridge operations, one on each side right here. So from here to here, bridge, make that a zero. From here to here, bridge, again, make that a zero. I'm, <laughs> before the next time I work in Clara, I'm gonna see if I can change my default bridge segments to a zero instead of one, because there's no reason they need to be one, because I just have to come back in and change it every time. Okay, and then last one. So this was just like a way of showing you that like if you want to work with primitives and quads, you know, like that are all in quads, like it's easy to do. Like you just have to make your own. Okay, and then now you have a cylinder that rather than uh, the default, which everything goes into a pole, in the very center of it, now everything goes into quads, and it's a lot easier to work with. Um, you do run into one issue, which is these corners, because your quad isn't like perfectly, you know, symmetrical, but that's totally fine, um, because it's just usually easier in general to work with. And now if you need to run like a detail, like across the top of the cylinder, like say you wanted to like extrude like a face or something off of it. Let me see if I can get a good view to work with this. I think it's this one. Let's see if I select like the entire chair too. No, good, okay. Whoops. Okay, so now if you wanted to like make an extrusion like off the top right here and like cover all the sides, go to zero. You can go here and then you can just like grab your scale tool. Whoops. Maybe. Okay, there we go. You just grab your like scale tool in here. And then you could make like these kind of changes like right off the top, you know, that you couldn't make before. Like, and then like scale across the top of the cylinder. So it's like, you know, there's just like good ways to work with topology. And then there's like tricks you can like learn and, and do. And then, you know, once you've made it once, you can just like drag it out to the side or like save it and import it. And then like now if I ever just need like a basic cylinder primitive, you know, that's all quads. Like I can just grab this like and, you know, like just duplicate it, just clone it. And then I can work with it now at this point. So now I have it for the rest of the time. So if I need like a cylinder that's quad based, like I can just grab that and use it. Same thing with the sphere. The sphere one's just easier to make um, because all you have to do is take a cube and subdivide it a bunch. But back to a regularly scheduled uh, chair that we're making. And there's like alternatives. Um, this is kind of a specific like kind of modeling, um, this kind of hold edge space subdivision modeling. Like there's other ways to do this, right? Like you could do this with like, um, if like if you wanted to make a shape like low poly, you know, you could just do this with quads and bevels. So like instead of, um, like instead of subdividing it and adding like all these um, stuff that I don't need. Cause like if you look at this like armrest right here, You'll notice that I have like a lot of wasted polygons, right? Like, cause I, like I have all this in the middle. Let me go to my face mode. Like I got all this in the middle, like from here to here. Ugh, go away. Like that all the way around, you know, that's like, like it's just a flat surface, right? So I could take out like all these polygons and really cut down on the uh, count, like of how many I have in my scene. That's not as true for this one because this isn't a flat surface, like it's curved across. So here you really do need that high polygon count, um, but it just depends on your edges, you know, like what kind of shapes you're making and like how necessary everything is. Um, also, this doesn't matter at all and like unless you're using real time. So like if we're working in VR, like I'm suddenly, you know, very cautious about how many polygons I'm using because the more polygons you use, the slower it's gonna run or the better computer you need to run it. Um, although computers have gotten a lot better the computers that are uh, have gotten a lot better at like you know rendering out more polygons like it's not as big a deal as it used to be but also you know if you need um if you need it you can bake these out like in maps um i do it all the time normal mapping uh which is almost like old school at this point you know like normal mapping has been around forever but you can take like a low poly object and then like bake on like high poly information into it into the like lighting of it which is very cool um, I think I talk about it every single time, like I do one of these streams. Ugh, come on. I think I talk about it every single time, like I do one of these streams, just because, like, 
normal mapping like as a technology like made so much so much stuff like possible like in like real time rendering like it's crazy uh, and now they're like kind of old school like at this point but like the the contribution they made can't be like overstated all right cool so real fast i'm going to go back to this chair seat and i'm going to kind of move this uh into conformance how much time do i have 20 minutes yeah let's see if we can make some head headway i want to finish this cushion and do some of this on this uh, chair base and then we can get to the fun stuff which is like modeling like the bottom of it but like and I always go on tangents like about like here's a here's a handy thing you can do like if you're working in your scene but we're gonna go back to this and I'm gonna start moving and pushing these polys around and get to the shape I want so for this let me see this is the view I want we're gonna work inside here and I'm going to go to my vertice selection and I'm going to start moving these. So I want it to kind of conform to the shape of the chair. So we're going to start with this, like as a good starting point. Uh, I think we can scale it up a little bit and like maneuver things around. We also might want to pop, uh, I think, some off the top and bottom. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make one more extrusion that kind of comes off the top here. Yeah, I've almost got all the cushions done. Yeah, and yes, all, all the tangents. I feel like it's like part of like teaching people about this where I'm like, and here's a handy tip. Um, but it doesn't always lead to me like getting work done quickly, I guess. So we're gonna select these faces. I'm making sure, yeah, I don't really have any hold edges right here. That's just the bounding box. Okay, and then I'm gonna just do an extrusion. That one's a little big. I'm going to bring it back down to zero and I'm going to scale this just a little bit up like that and then we're going to drag it up because we want like that more rounded cushiony feel like to the top of it okay that looks good for me and then same thing on the bottom again if you're finding stuff is like all up in your biz just grab it make sure that you've got a descriptive name for it uh, chair seat and then just hide it, click it and hit H. Now it's gone, and now it's not in our way anymore. Okay, cool. So then you can grab this, and then we can put our faces in. There's only three, because we're keeping it simple, so it's fine just to click them. And then we're gonna extrude out. So we'll do this, I'm gonna put it back to zero. And we're just gonna drag it out a little bit and scale it in. Yeah, this bounding box, like it's good in some ways, but like it always scares me. I'm like, oh no, did I do something wrong? And like now my edges are all moving and I'm like, oh no, Ian, it's just the bounding box. You also notice that I'm like, kind of like getting my camera all over the place. Um, gosh, sorry. Defaulting to shift, shift uh, clicking, left clicking as being a, an additive process and it's not here. But I can move this back into place. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good start for the cushion. I'm gonna do some more stuff to it. I'm gonna probably poof it out a little bit in some areas. You can also like add um, like seat covers, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for a second. I'll show you what I mean. I'll give it some texture in a sec. Without the bottom, it does not look comfortable anymore. No, it looks more like like a piece of exercise equipment. Like you're gonna do like dips on it or something. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, so right now I'm just going to preview that by doing a quick subdivide in here. So we'll do a mesh smooth. We're going to kind of see how that looks. Okay, as far as a cushion goes, that's not too bad. Um, it just isn't adhering to the shape of the chair. So I'm going to have to go in and mess with that. But as far as like where the edges are holding and stuff, that looks perfectly fine. Uh, as, a, as a start, again. So we'll just walk it back. And then we'll go to the tools, and I'm going to work in this view right here. So we'll select, we'll go in our vertices, and we're just going to start dragging stuff to where it needs to go. Kind of get it back on the chair itself. I always like modeling like mundane things. You know, like I could be modeling like a treasure chest or like dragons or like anything or like a spaceship, and I'm like, I want to do a chair. Like That's what I want. Okay, so that's adhering really well to it. Let's drag these front ones out a little bit. I kind of want to give it like a little poof. 
while still like keeping like some of that curve. And we can do this later. I'll show you like once we uh, get a good extrusion going or a good subdivision, you can like go in and like that might be a little too poofy on top. Yeah, something like that. Let's see how that looks. There are no limits on the chair. I mean, we've been we've had them for a while. They've been kind of perfected, you know, like our chairs kind of are spaceships, like at this point. We've had so many iterations of chairs, like throughout thousands, thousands of years of human history. And this is where we've come to. Modeling them in the third dimension. Okay, so we'll go back here. I'm gonna do another subdivision just to check on it. Yeah, that looks good. A little little bit of poof out. It looks a little more comfortable. It's not as it doesn't look as extreme on this back curve anymore. It doesn't look like it's promoting terrible, terrible posture. Maybe just kind of bad posture. So we can leave that here. What I want to show is that um when you're doing these subdivisions real fast, is that like you kind of want to work on the um level that you're at at any given moment. So right now I've been getting like the block out and getting all the basic shapes and everything. But what you can do is once you're subdividing, there's kind of no limits to that. So what I can do is, is I can subdivide once, but then go up like a couple more levels. And what you can do with this, once you have it, is you have enough geometry to like really start putting like some interesting details on the chair. So I can go into, how much time do I have? 15 minutes? That should be enough time. Um, let me back out real fast because I actually don't want to subdivide everything yet. If you get to a point where you like don't want to go too far, like on one piece that you're working on, just duplicate it and drag it off to the side. Like, cause like now I can always go back and grab that, right? Like, and um, there might be a limit to my undos or something, but I'll always have that geometry if I need to go back to it. So mesh smooth. We're gonna go up a couple times. We'll go up two times. And what we can do here is now that we have all this extra all these extra polygons, you can start like making texture out of it. And like, I'll kind of try to show what I mean here. Select this one. Hoping we can get some, let's see, maybe this far. I was hoping I could just like draw across. We have this selection element. So I'm wondering like, what does this do? Whatever. Like if I go from here to here, does this do anything? No, okay. I just want to see like if there's anything I can do. Okay, well we can always just like click and drag. That's totally fine. I'm always down to do some clicking. And then afterwards we can clean it up if we need to. And once we get it here we can like grow it, you know, like to get like the second, second, the actual segment I need. So once you have something like this, you can like take it and extrude it. So we'll go back up. Do an extrusion. And I want to mess with this a little bit. Let's put it back down to zero. I like having like manual control when I do this. We can like extrude out this geometry real fast and then we can like scale it in. Something like this. And you can do this like all across the chair, right? Like it doesn't just need to be here. I'm just making sure. And then you can like do another one like right underneath it. Let's do this one instead. We'll, we'll grow our selection. And then we'll grow it. And I grew my selection. And then we'll go ahead and extrude it. And you can kind of see what we're doing. It's like we're making like this appearance of like cloth you know like kind of like the leather like folds and like the seams in there in the chair you know like just by making these extrusions and I'm just like making sure I kind of get a good look right here and then if we were to go and subdivide it again this is fast by the way like I'd spend more time on this but it's just something to kind of showcase what you can do is that I could go in here and I could subdivide this whole thing again so we'll do another mesh smooth and like look at like what it does like for it. So like as you're building up texture, now you're kind of getting this like padded seam like onto the chair. Um, and you can build that all the way down, right? To kind of create that like um, like sewn like hem, you know, where this is like the fabric coming out. 
and you can do this um, yeah and you can do that and like and create like all that detail but you can't do that until you have the polygons right like if I tried to do that um, you know like at this stage like there's just not enough polygons to like make it happen you know you'd have to like extrude it out and go one at a time so just something that you can keep in mind that is, is like as you you know extrude up you can add more and more detail as you go and you can use like the existing smooth to kind of put it in place but that's too that's far down the line because what I want to do now is just make sure I'm blocking out this chair and kind of getting it to the point it needs to go so we're gonna subdivide this to make it look nice oh I think I moved one back there we go. Hmm. Can I grab the under one? You know what you can do? You can grab this. You can hit hide. Yeah, and then we can just keep it back in the reserve. Okay, all good. And then we can bring that chair back in our explorer. And since we know it's the chair seat, it's easy to find. Okay. Yeah, thank you for saying that they're classy extrusions. Like I like I like that descriptor for it. But like these are the ones that we're gonna work with. They're not like beautiful, but they are classy. And now we can go back and we can start thinking about like how this seat is gonna want to go. And we can use a box model for this. Right now I've kind of been using it as a placeholder. Um, but you can like mess with it. Like this might be a good place to do plane modeling and get like a nice silhouette here. I think I'm gonna box model it uh, just because it's faster. Like I already have the thickness in place and we can go from there. Um, but we'll try to knock that out in the next few minutes and then I will say goodbye to everyone like and thanks for tuning in. So real fast what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few cuts from a top-down perspective at this point. So we'll jump back over to our tools and I think I hope you can see like as I've been doing this like how the workflow for every object isn't that different you know like these these are kind of different objects in appearance you know like where you have these like loops for the chairs and like the backing these are kind of the same they're all kind of just like warped cubes but like at the end of the day like anytime you're doing any kind of modeling here you're kind of using the same workflow you know you're just kind of jumping in here uh, pushing your vertices around to where they need to go and like doing a quick subdivision checking in and then uh, going back and adding like detail where it needs it and that's kind of like the same thing that I do with like all 3D art. Like I don't know if you've ever like attended any of my sculpting workshops or sculpting streams, but it's the same thing. You know, you work basic, you know, block out your proportions. And then like once like all the stuff is where you want it, like and where you want to have it, you go back and add detail, you know, and like you always are like kind of building up across the whole object. Um, so it's just like a good way to think about, you know, 3D art and just 3D modeling in general is like block out your shapes you know keep them simple and then go back and start adding detail um, so always always a good way to work like uh, probably in other aspects of life yeah it's only um, yeah it's I'm gonna continue this series next week we'll probably try to knock out the chair I'll do some um, more advanced modeling on like the wheel like the wheel carriage and stuff um, like kinda show how you can get like objects you know with like five spokes and stuff out and then we'll knock this chair out I guess so real fast until we do that I'm just gonna try to knock out some of this chair silhouette and then we'll go um, so I've been talking I wanted to talk a little bit more about like you know like I talked about it a little bit at the beginning and like why I'm using browser tools like in the first place um, for modeling and it's just like thinking about it as an educator like if uh, because that's what we do you know in learning spaces and services in the library we want to show you these tools and show you how to use them and like kind of make them accessible and these browser tools that are kind of coming onto the scene or that have existed for a while like are just really great at that because anyone like with internet access can use them like you know there's no restriction you know like if you're on like a Mac or a PC um, and it's like they're accessible you know is the big thing because they can't be too heavy you know because they're browser based so like you can kind of create these very accessible tools um, like like I've said like things like Blender and things like Maya are great but they're intimidating you know like CAD programs like AutoCAD is like great it's great it's a great tool it's powerful like it does what you need it to but it's got like a pretty steep learning curve 
And, you know, like even the act of installing it, if someone's just like tuning in for a workshop, like I could tell you to like, you know, sit there for, you know, 20 minutes and install Blender. And like we could do that during the workshop, but that eats up a lot of time. Or I could like, you know, say, okay, we're going to open up an internet browser and go to clara.io and make an account. And then we can get up and running in like three minutes. So it's just great as an educational tool and it's just great for what we do. And it's just like that these are getting so much more powerful than they used to be. Because uh, in the past you could never do this kind of stuff on a browser. Like it just wouldn't work. Too much load on everything and now these tools are like fairly robust. And you can get basically all the tools you need to make anything you know, in your browser right off the bat. Turn this to zero. So this is both like a showcase into modeling because you can use these same tools in any software. Like I, like I have done a little bit in Clara, but I'm not like a Clara expert. I'm just picking up um, like a tool set that I've used across all surface modelers like my entire life, like my entire time working with it. And it's very transferable across all of them. Like I can pick this up and be like, okay, you know, I need a cut vertice tool. I need like to insert poly loops. I need an extrude tool uh, and I need like a subdivision tool. You know, and then there's some other ones that make things easier, like bridge and bevel tools. But basically, um, if I can get you know these components in place, you can use them in anything, and you really like know the workflow. So it's it's pretty cool to like open up a new um, program for the first time and kind of figure that stuff out and be like, oh yeah, I remember this from this, and like this is how this works. And like each one will have you know different features, like bells and whistles. And like some will do things better than others for sure, but um, and make parts of your life much easier. But you know all the tools are there, and you can like really make cool stuff with any of them. Is, is kind of what I want to illustrate. So we're gonna do another cut plane right here. Turn this back to zero. Zero that out, and we'll collapse it. All right, and then we can start dragging these vertices around. So what I want to say, I mean, like, as a student, you know, there's a lots, there's lots of software available to you. Lots of um, companies make student packages, so you could go download Maya right now and like work on that, and that would be great. But you just, it would take so long to get up and running if you've never started in 3D before. And then if you start with something like this, you know, you can play around with it, see if you like it, see, um, get ideas for what you can make, and then you can get started a lot faster. You can get started making cool stuff, you know, like right off the bat, and then if you feel like you want more features down the line, then maybe later you can jump into Maya or Blender. Like, it's totally fine, either one. But I think these are just such a great, such a great resource, like for anyone starting out, like I really do. Okay, let's go back and see how this is looking. So we've kind of got a more aesthetic silhouette built up. We're probably gonna mess with the curve of the seat too. If you're making, like, this is just like an art tip. Like, if you're making stuff, um, like, squares are boring. You know, like, this is why we've added, like, this pivot into the back. You want to make curves. You want to, like, mess with the thickness. You want to vary the thickness in places. It just makes uh, stuff look more interesting if you do it that way. Two minutes left? Okay. So, it's so like I said, again, static cubes are boring. Even if you're using a cube, like mess it up, mix it up some places. Like throw this out, make it like thicker in the back, thinner up front, kind of get a full cube going, bring this front edge down, you know, something like this. Cause just like doing stuff like this, just, just makes your stuff more appealing. It's just more interesting to look at. It looks like it's got like a better curve, better, better design, like even if it's not, like even from like a practical standpoint, like now this is much harder to, to produce or make, like aesthetically, like now all of a sudden it looks much better. And you see this like in lots of places. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stop actually modeling here uh, because we're right at two o'clock, but I just wanna thank everyone for joining in, like uh, sticking with me if you were, you know, sticking around in the beginning when I was kind of figuring stuff out. But I think we're getting to a place where we can make some cool stuff. So um, if you found this interesting at all, you know, download Clara, clara.io. I mean, download it. You don't have to, that's the thing. Just go to a web browser, punch it in and make a free account. Um, 
the company seems pretty good. Hopefully they don't get bought out in the next five years by some giant company. And uh, just play around, see what you can make. Yeah, no problem. And um, join me here next Wednesday because I'll be doing the same thing. I'll kind of be continuing this, um, extolling the virtues of a browser-based workflow and making some cool stuff in it to kind of show that it is possible. All right, well, thank you all so much. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and tune it out. I don't think I'm going to transition. Thank you for joining in, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.